I'm a registered dietitian. I'm an exercise physiologist. I'm a cardiologist. I'm a clinical pharmacy coordinator. I'm living with heart disease every day. And I live with coronary artery disease. Atrial fibrillation is uh, an abnormal rhythm of the heart that involves the upper chambers that generally give a very systematic rhythm pulse to the heart, usually about 60 beats a minute or so, where they instead go into a chaotic rhythm, where the chaos on the upper chambers of the heart, called the atria, are now making the main pumping chambers of the heart go either fast or fast and irregular with increased heart rates. Atrial fibrillation uh, affects many millions of adults in the United States, approximately three million people. It affects mostly people with structural abnormalities of their heart or with other medical conditions like high blood pressure or diabetes, but can be associated in people who have none of these. It affects both men and women, and women tend to have more symptoms. The symptoms can include having rapid palpitations or a feeling of rapid heartbeats and shortness of breath and chest pain can also be associated with atrial fibrillation. In addition, one of the problems with atrial fibrillation is that you can form a blood clot that causes a stroke and more women tend to have strokes from atrial fibrillation than men. Men are incredibly different than women. When I'm sick at home, the whole world ends and when my wife's sick at home, no one can even notice. Women tend to downplay their symptoms and not seek medical attention because they have so many responsibilities. They run the household, they run their own lives, they run other people's lives. And so it's common for, for women uh, to present late with their symptoms, and that needs to change. The hallmark symptoms of atrial fibrillation are the feeling that your heart's beating irregularly or fast and irregular. And so anytime someone experiences those types of symptoms, they should be evaluated. And the evaluation starts with a physical examination and a history of what those feelings are and when they occur and how long they last. And from there, uh, testing such as an electrocardiogram or a home monitor would be appropriate. All these tests are non-invasive. It's common for people with atrial fibrillation, especially in the early stages, to have short periods of atrial fibrillation. And therefore, when you show up to the doctor, you don't have a diagnosis. It's, it needs to be caught during the episode. Atrial fibrillation is uh, treated in two main categories. One is controlling the speed in which the heart goes, and that can be done with medications and sometimes a pacemaker. And the other is to try to prevent atrial fibrillation in the first place. And that can be done by medication or radio frequency ablation, a catheter-based approach where cautery is done inside the heart to remove the abnormal pieces of tissue that are causing atrial fibrillation. So for many people, the final treatment that brings relief to the patient is not the first step in the treatment process. And so some people make their way through trying a medicine, doing things like cardioversion, where the heart's shocked back into normal rhythm. Some people try an ablation, and some people end up with a pacemaker. We never know which route is the best for any one patient, but there are many ways to go about it. The main point is that everyone with atrial fibrillation should find relief with one of our therapies. Uh, one example of atrial fibrillation is a patient who is in her 40s who felt rapid and irregular heartbeats. And this had occurred on several different occasions, and they only lasted for just a few minutes at a time. When she saw her physician, the heart rhythm was always fine and in normal rhythm at that time. But on one occasion, she had a prolonged episode where when she finally came into the physician, she was still having the symptoms, and that was captured on an electrocardiogram as atrial fibrillation. 
Other ways to try to capture that would be to have a home monitor, monitor that you wear all the time, and that can capture atrial fibrillation. That patient was successfully treated with something called radiofrequency ablation, where a catheter is threaded within the heart, and in a very, very non-invasive way, the um, problem areas of the heart causing atrial fibrillation are cauterized and that removes the rhythm. So another patient who is in her 80s presented with a stroke and at that time she was found to be in atrial fibrillation. She had no awareness that she was in this abnormal heart rhythm until she showed up with a stroke. Her heart was in atrial fibrillation and there was no clear need to change that other than just to control how fast it went. So she was treated with medicines at first and eventually needed a pacemaker. And with this treatment, felt fine and normal and, and went along with a normal life. My name is Bill Katsianis. I'm a cardiologist.